Dear God, I got one question. I need to know do revolutionaries go to heaven? And if so, may their legacies last forever and they seeds grow. Tell them that we love them so and never let them die slow. It's like we cursed to be born black. We was kings and queens, now look where we at. I know it won't be long before we take it back. I just hope I live long enough to see it happen. And that's a fact. Cause one thing when you pro black. You might love your people, but they may not love you back For more than 400 years, we've been under attack We survived slavery and then they gave us crack gave us crack. Do revolutionaries go to heaven? 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 I wanna know Do revolutionaries go to heaven? I hope so Do revolutionaries go to heaven? Revolutionaries go to heaven. I hope. Man, first and foremost, I want to thank you again for coming back on the platform. Uh, last time we had some technical difficulties. I'm in the motherland. I'm in Kenya, and my Wi-Fi okay. was cutting up on me. But I'm in a new spot. Um, gotcha. Definitely an honor, man. And um, we're gonna get right into it. it for the viewers who may not recognize you or you know, be familiar with you, you know, let them know your name and definitely let them know where you're from. What up, y'all? My name is Punchline, one half of Punch the Words, uh, one fourth of the rap group EMC, and I'm from New York, Lower East Side. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay, now my first question is, um, by you coming from New York, uh, when did you first get exposed to hip hop? Was it something that was already taking place in the community or did you get wind of it like by, you know, via radio or television like the rest of the world? Um, I got into hip hop being influenced by my uncle. He um, used to rhyme. So I used to like kind of just mimic some of the stuff that he used to say. And that's kind of what introduced me to it. And then one day my uh, my mother took me to a record store that um, they used to actually play the vinyl record in the store. And there was a record that came out by the name of Rapper's Delight by the Sugar Hill Gang. And um, she had the DJ in there play it for me. And that was like my first introduction to it. Wow, that's what's up. You took it all the way back to Sugar Hill Gang, man. That's a blessing to, to live in a city and a community, you know, where that was going on at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, my next question is this. Now, now, when did you actually um, begin to participate in hip hop? And did you start out as an MC or was you b-boying, doing graffiti, DJing? Um, I would probably say I started out breakdancing as a kid, you know, going in, in, in public school. I'll say maybe fourth or fifth grade, you know, breaking was a thing. So, you know, you had the movie Beach Street. You had um, Wild Style out there. There's another movie called Breaking. So those kind of made influenced me to kind of like try to learn the culture of, of dance and do break moves. So that's how I got into pop locking and all that back then. So that would probably be my first foot in, into the hip hop culture. Okay, okay. Now that you mentioned, you know, a lot of those movies, they had a lot of classics come out back then. Do you feel like those movies was accurate portrayals of what really was going on at that time in hip hop? Or do you feel like that was kind of commercial or? Um. With Wild Style, I'll definitely say that was that was organic, how hip-hop was in New York at that time. Beach Street is a little polished, a little Hollywood, but yeah, that was that that depicted a, another era in that time. Uh, Breaking, I can't speak for that because that was like more of a West Coast thing. So I, I feel like that might have been a little bit more Hollywood than anything. Right, right. Okay, okay. Now breaking that was on that was like uh the glove and iced tea. I think that was that yeah. the one with the glove and iced tea. Okay, okay. Now uh Wild Style, was that the one that, that that's on the beginning of Illmatic when he was spraying the trains or somebody's yeah. brother come home from the military? Yeah, okay, so okay. Now there's what's a the scene in, in the movie Wild uh, Style where the like the end scene where they're performing in, into this uh it's an amphitheater. Yeah, that's in my neighborhood. That's like literally like five blocks away from me. Wow. Okay. Now I remember that scene for sure. Yeah. Now what's the right in my neighborhood where I grew uh -huh. up? At? 
Right now, what'd you say your neighborhood? We said, what'd you say, Lower East Side? Yeah, that's the Lower East Side, of Manhattan. So downtown, Lower East Side. So if you ever come in your Lower East Side, I said, right okay. the FDR Drive is where um, they kind of shot that at. That's what's up, man, because New York is humongous, man. Y'all got so many boroughs and neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? It seems small to us, though. I mean, most people say you got the Bronx, Brooklyn, um, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island. And that's about it. I mean, Jersey's in there, but that's a whole different city and state. Right, right. Because I know people get territorial because, like, like Brooklyn or even any borough is bigger than where I'm from, from Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just millions and millions of people. But like you say, if you go from New Jersey to uh, Bronx to Manhattan, you know what I'm saying? Those mm -hmm. different communities, right, right. Different, you know, talk different, dress different. You know, it's just a very you know, artistic and creative place, man. That's a blessing to be from there. Yeah, it has, okay. it has, its, it has its gifts and curses. Right, right. But I mean, for you to make it out and, and be, you know, an outstanding MC, it's a lot of competition, you know what I'm saying? So you, yeah. you, you done seen a lot of people come and go, you know what I'm saying? Especially coming yeah, back from a lot of that Chicago. competition yeah. in, in New York. Right, right. Now, I wanted to ask you, did you have any, like, particular influences as far as your style? You know, when we young, we want to be LL, we want to be whoever, you know what I'm saying? What, who was the, the cast that you was listening to and looking up to at the time when you started, um, you know? The, there's three artists that kind of, like, stuck with me. Um, one would be Big Daddy Kane. Two, Red Man. And three would be Common. Wow, wow, that's a nice little trio. Um, love Red Man, uh, Doc's the name, Muddy Waters, uh, Blackout, you know, him and Mev. Red, Red Man is, is, is definitely underrated for sure. He's a giant, lyrical giant, still raw. Um, yeah. Big Daddy Kane, he showed out at that versus, man. I feel like he. He, he had a point yeah. to prove. You know, he was flowing. He was doing the acapella. That was, that was one of my favorite verses to see him in uh, KRS-One get down like that. They both was going. But shout out to Kane. Yeah. He definitely influenced a lot of MCs. And, he, and, and a lot of people give him credit for changing the pace of rap. Because, you know, hip-hop was kind of like, you know, a little different before, like, the Kane and the Rock Kim. Yeah, the, the, they had an old school flow. And then Kane came in with the the bad, the bad, the bad, the bad. He kind of, like, picked up the pace of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, man. Yeah. And then you said yeah, Common. would be my three major influences, music-wise. Right, right. Common is a phenomenal MC. I was I was just listening to, matter of fact, we're going to get into that. I'm, I'm going to say that. 